Happy Saturday, everyone. My name is Air Samurai, and welcome to Anime Serial Series, Episode 2. Um, in this episode, I'm going to be talking a little bit about Attack on Titan, Season 3, Episode 14, Thunder Spears. I literally just got finished watching the episode. Um, <clears throat> it's 12.47 at night, so it's a little late. I just got finished uploading the first Anime Serial Series and putting everything together on multiple platforms like Himalaya, IGTV, um, I also believe on iTunes and, and YouTube. So if you haven't had a chance to, to catch Anime Serial Series Episode 1, please go check it out. But um, anyway, once again, another incredible episode. I love the way that they do the cliffhangers leading into the next episode. They always cut it at just the right time. Like it really makes you want to to see the next episode and for what it's worth i love anime and i love all of the different shows that come on but there has to be a way where we can get some sort of american version of every single episode coming out all at once and we don't have to wait on it from week to week because sometimes like for instance when you finish watching an episode like thunder spears it is agonizing to wait on the next episode i mean it's like you know you're just sitting there and you're just like oh my gosh i can't wait till the next thing comes out and then assassination classroom comes up next on my hulu feed i thought the episode was really good i like the different sequence like how they explore each character and what each character is thinking um so it's not all one dimensional all told from aaron's point of view you know, you get a sense of, you know, what Captain Levi is thinking and what what everyone is like kind of going through mentally at, at those particular times. Also, like the the scene where, um, you know, the leader of the of the scouts is like standing there and he's thinking about, you know, even his visions as a kid and how uh, he wanted to share with everyone his father's theory and then at the end of it, he's talking about how, you know, everything is on him and he's standing on a pile of corpses. I thought that was really, really well done um, just in terms of like the flashback and the colors and, the, you know, even the way that they limited the am animation and really didn't animate too much. And I've noticed this often throughout a lot of anime that I've watched, especially high budget stuff. Excuse me. I, I just thought that in terms of the episode itself or in terms of anime itself they, they do a really good job of finding moments within each episode where they don't have to actually do any animation they can do still images and they can pan across them or go up and go down and i think it's a really really clever trick that allows you to take up screen time kind of not have to have such an expensive cost on each individual episode. I think it's really, really clever. Um, so they did that during that part. Uh, and I, I was really, I just want to say something real quick. I was really, really excited when he told Captain Levi to go fight the Beast Titan. Like, and Levi was just like, He's so calm in any situation, and, and a, a lot of them are calm, like the older, like the leaders and stuff, they are calm in certain situations. Um, but Levi was just so calm, and he was just so ready to take on whatever. He, like, the feeling that I get from watching Captain Levi is the same feeling that I get when I see Saitama uh, about to fight someone, or even Escanor, when he is, you know, powered up Escanor. Uh, I get the same feeling every single time because these characters are so OP. <laughs> like, there's nothing that can stop them at all. Like, Levi, I know he got his leg hurt. I think it was in season one when he was fighting Annie. But it was like a freak accident. He's so strong and he's so powerful. That normally doesn't happen to, like, a Levi or something. So, you know, just watching him get ready to take on whoever he's about to take on, like, I fully expect every single time he gets ready to fight that he's just going to destroy whatever's sitting in, in front of him. Um, but, yeah, I thought it was kind of cool. And then 
you know, they've got the scene playing. And then I think Hanjis, I might have said the name wrong, but she's talking um, to like, why can I not remember this guy's name? This is supposed to be an episode about anime, and I can't remember the character's name. Leader of the Scouts. Attack on Titan. And it better not. Erwin. He would have a goofy name like Erwin, but um, <laughs> in thinking of Erwin, when I even just looked it up to see Erwin, <laughs> Erwin Smith, I think. <laughs> I think I started thinking of Erwin from Billy and Mandy. Uh, so, man, they should have. <laughs> Erwin from Billy and Mandy was just such a goofball. And then you got this dude, Erwin Smith, and he's supposed to be like, you know, in this super dangerous situation, um, protecting humanity. Let me see if I can type in Erwin, Billy. Oh, Erwin from Billy and Mandy's name is spelled with an I. I wonder if his last name is Smith, too. Erwin Smith. Huh. Oh, he's voiced by a lady named Vanessa Marshall. Nope, he doesn't have a nickname. Or, or he doesn't have a last name, but... Anyway, getting off base here. Billy and Mandy was a great show, especially the episode when they um, turned into like Dragon Ball Z fighters and started uh, kicking each other's uh, butts. But uh, I thought that was really well done in terms of Levi, like going off in the background, going to fight the Beast Titan. You can see the Beast Titan in the distance. They do some really good paintings of the Beast Titan, like of his face and just like him just sitting there looking all grim and evil. Um, those paintings really amp up the the level of I would say danger in how the audience views this threat. So the the paintings are like a one, in my opinion. Um, and then even like so moving on to the the later parts of the episode, I was watching. Um, as Erwin, not Erwin, but Aaron was fighting the uh, the armor titan. They're still looking for Bertholdt, so I watched the preview at the end. You know, that's obviously he's coming in the next episode. But there, he was fighting him, and then for some reason, it, it almost felt like Aaron intentionally, like, got his leg kicked or or swept or something, or like he was like. He was trying to fall on the ground, and because he was trying to fall on the ground, in my opinion, it seemed as if he was setting up the scouts to come in with the thunder sticks and uh, really do a number on the armor titan. Even how uh, Aaron, when he hit the ground and he let the guy, he let the armor titan pick him up and slam him into the buildings like when he hit the ground the armor titan tried to end Aaron with a rocket punch from you know from his right hand and he punched into the ground so Aaron kind of dodged it but I just felt like Aaron wanted the battle to go to the ground the entire time so that way they could get into a wrestling match and give everybody else time to get there with the thunder sticks so that was a cool strategy, a cool tactic. I like how they like they they set up different moments within the episodes that kind of allude to what the strategy is for each individual person because what happens is is you you're watching the episode and you're thinking that one of the characters 
on the opposite side of the cadets has it figured out or whatever it is that's going on at the time. You feel like they have it figured out, but they don't actually have it figured out. And then the twist within each individual episode to me seems as if, oh, well, we have a plot and there's a plan and we got to figure out what these guys are going to do. And then we've got to counter that. But we might be wrong with our counter. And then we do something different. And then now they're guessing and then they're trying to figure out what it is we're doing. So there's constantly questions that are being asked over and over and over again within each individual episode that really, really draw in the interest of the person that's watching it. Then I think that um, what was cool with how they introduced the Thundersticks, I thought the introduction of the Thundersticks was, I mean, I feel like there was more to be desired there. They show it, they show the Thundersticks breaking through a tree, and that's cool and all, but when um, when Hanjis took the scouts outside, I thought that she had like a Titan somewhere outside tied up and she was just literally going to destroy this guy <laughs> or this titan with uh with one of the thunder sticks proving its raw power just like making it explode all over the place but that didn't happen she used the thunder stick on a tree and then when all of the the scouts were flying at the armored titan to me it, it just didn't make sense for the, I mean, I get it from a storytelling standpoint, you know, hey, we've been working with this guy for forever, and, like, he was one of our comrades, but he's killed so many of you since then, like, you guys need to get over this, he is not your comrade anymore, he doesn't care anything about you, I'm pretty sure he's not going to be dead at the beginning of episode 15, because I saw the preview where Bertholdt was flying up in the air and he had ODM gear on so I'm pretty sure he's not going to be dead and then on top of that it's just like this is war you guys you don't have time to be sitting around being indecisive about someone who's literally slaughtered tons and tons and tons of your fellow comrades and he's like doing it with a smile on his face like he, he doesn't care at all about anything that has to do with humanity or the scouts. The only thing or people he cares about is his team and his side of things. So the, the indecision was just like, it was good to create dramatic tension, but huh, I don't think it was a bad thing. If I was writing a story or if I was directing an episode, I would have done that too. But um, I think it's just a good talking point to have on the anime serial series to talk about those particular moments where things like that happen. Well, uh, that's it for this episode of anime serial series. It's about 15 minutes in. Um, I did not check to see if a new episode of One Punch Man is on. It is one on one in the morning, so it's getting pretty getting pretty early in the morning. I need to get some sleep because I have a bunch of stuff that I need to do tomorrow. I need to get on a phone call and the client, all these other different things. So I got some stuff that I have to do. But before I do that, I just want to check to see if the latest episode of One Punch Man is up yet. Aha. It is not up. The preview for it is up and it is going to be season two, episode 17, the martial arts tournament which I can't wait to see what's going to happen with this martial arts tournament. And I'm, I'm not 100% sure with these One Punch Man episodes if... Okay, so it says air date 5-6-2019. That was yesterday. And it's still not available. So does I have to wait a whole 24 hours before I can watch it? Like, what is the deal with this? But anyway, uh, that's going to be it for this anime serial series. Anybody that's watching or listening or on any of the platforms, if 
I'm always down to watch new, exciting, interesting anime. So if there's anything out there that is cool, uh, please leave it in the comment section. I would love to hear about it. And uh, I just love storytelling and animation. So uh, leave, down, leave down there whatever it is that you think that might be interesting that may be animated or uh, live action even. It doesn't matter. But yeah. That's it, guys. All right. Um, until next time.